Hi everybody, welcome to this edition of Iredell Statesville Schools Ed Talks. We're glad you tuned in today. We have a very special program today. We're talking about our trip, our recent trip to China. And with me today are three of the folks who went on that uh, visit. Uh, Dr. Melanie Taylor, who is our Deputy Superintendent. Mrs. Kelly Cooper, our Executive Director of Secondary Education. And a very special guest, Mr. Jay Sherrill, who is a senior at South Idle High School. So welcome everybody. Thanks. We're certainly glad you could be here today. And uh, recently, the Iredell Statesville Schools uh, entered into an agreement with a company called Tower Bridge. And we are hosting a large contingency of Chinese students here in our school system. You folks, just a few weeks ago, went to China to deliver our formal invitation to the uh, students and their parents. And so you were actually in China for how many days? Eight days. Eight days. So that was quite a trip. And we are really anxious to hear about how that visit went and what some of your takeaways were. So who wants to start? What was your first impressions of China? Um, I'll start off. Uh, we got a very, very warm welcome in China from, uh, from Tower Bridge at the airport to all of the schools that we visited. I think they were um, very, very excited and uh, interested in having their students come and learn about the culture and school in America. I will say China was very, very crowded. Uh, lots of people, lots of cars, uh, lots of different places, but it was, it was overall a great visit for us. Right. Now, uh, Jay, this is your first time out of the country, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So what's international travel like? Um, the plane ride over was a little intense, uh, <laughs> just because it was 14 hours. Um, but when we got there, I was just amazed by how big everything was, yeah. um, from the airport to the roads um, to all the places that we went to. Yeah, I tell you, you know, the population of the United States is roughly 330 million people, but, and you were in a country of one and a half billion, billion people. And so everything's bigger there. Um, uh, the students that you encountered there, what was your, what was your takeaways from uh, your interaction with the student population? Um, they seemed to be a lot like us. Um, of course, they were studious and hardworking because we were at great schools. Um, but you could also tell that they were joking around and having fun um, and just seemed to be overall, you know, kids just like us in high school. Mm. And you guys visit a total of seven schools, is that right? Eight schools. Eight schools. Yeah, so were they different levels of schools? Tell us a little bit about that, Kelly. Okay, um, we visited uh, we visited several high schools and some primary schools, which their primary schools actually um, have levels up into what we would call middle school. Mm -hmm. Then we also visited some of the middle schools as well. Um, but the kids at each one of the schools, they were very talented. Um, they focused a lot on art. Um, and the arts. The kids sang for us. Um, as we pulled up at one of the, at the primary school, there was a group, and it looked like they were about sixth graders. They had a band, um, and they played uh, Rockin' Around the Clock for us, and they had cowboy hats on for North Carolina because they were really excited that we were coming, but they were awesome. Um, the chorus sang for us that day as well, and their students were exceedingly talented. Mm -hmm. I would rival them to a college chorus mm -hmm. at the expertise and the difficulty of the material that the students were singing. Wow. Now, I know um, we have our initial group of students coming here to the United States in February, and um, approximately 150 students in that first contingency, is that right? Um, they would like for us to host approximately 200 students, but we will definitely need to have host families um, for these students. That's going to be our challenge, is making sure that we have enough host families to host the students who want to come. We actually received a letter after we got back an email saying that there were actually even more students who wanted to come than what we had even initially thought we might be able to host. Well, I, I've spoken to the officials there, and you, you folks made a great impression. Uh, while you were there. And I think that's why the numbers have jumped up. Uh, once the students met you and, and heard you speak and whatnot, they're very excited about this opportunity. And, and we will have to find host families, of course, which, as you said, will be a challenge for us. Um, we don't want to over-promise and under-deliver in this thing, so we'll be very mindful of that. Um, but the, the time period on this is February, and I think that's tied to their New Year celebration. The kids 
some of those kids will be out of school during that period for their new year. They'll actually be coming over in two groups. One group will be coming on January the 23rd, and the second group will be arriving on January the 25th, and they'll all stay through the February 15th um, time frame, which, mm. at which time they'll group back together and they'll spend a little bit more time in North Carolina before going back to China. But um, they will be in the United States for their Chinese New Year's, which will be February the 6th. And um, Kelly is helping them to coordinate a, a community-wide Chinese New Year celebration that we'll host at McGray Auditorium on February the 6th. Oh, that's going to be great. And, and the community will love that too. Get a taste of China and, mm -hmm. and Statesville uh, for their New Year. Uh, Kelly, talk to us just a little bit about the homestay and um, what you're looking for in the way of uh, host families and how they can get more information about that. Okay. Um, we basically need host families who are excited to learn another culture as well and to be able to help the Chinese students learn our culture. Um, they've asked basically that our students be placed in homes that they would have their own bedroom. Um, because most of the students are coming from a family of one child. Um, because until just recently, China um, only allowed one child per family. And so these students have really not been in a home with siblings before. So this will be a new experience for them and a good experience for them to learn to be able to have um, brothers and sisters to share with. <laughs> um, the students will then um, be transported to our public high schools. We, they'll attend m more than likely the high school that's in the area where the parent lives. Mm -hmm. um, we have more information. We're work currently working on a website and we'll have more information um, available for parents, hopefully by the end of the week. Good, good. And uh, Jay, back to you. Um, how do you think uh, these kids will be received in our high schools here in Iredell Statesville? Um, I think it'll be good. Uh, I think it'll be a good reception just because we don't really have, um, at least at South Iredell, we don't have a lot of exchange students. Um, so I think having that experience of new people um, from different cultures, especially China, it's across the world, um, will be cool. Um, just to see kind of how they take our classes, um, to see how they kind of handle the coursework that we do, that'll be a new experience. Um, maybe we can learn some stuff from them. Maybe we can teach them some things. Um, it'll be cool to take them to basketball games. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it'll be a good experience. Good. Now this is going to be an infusion of, of funds into our community too. The tuition that these students pay along with the reimbursements that'll be going to the host families. If a hundred students come here for the year long stay, we're looking at about $1.6 million of private money coming into the community. So that's a, a fairly significant economic impact on our community. So uh, I don't want everybody, I, I'd like for everybody to be aware of that as well. Uh, that's not why we're doing this, though. We're actually truly interested in the cultural exchange and the learning that's going to take place between their students and our students. And so we're very excited about uh, getting the kids together and letting them learn from each other. Um, while you were in China, uh, of course, China is a communist country. Could you, could you tell that you were in a country with uh, different philosophies and ideas about government and leadership and whatnot? There's no Google in China. So if you went to the internet, there was no Google, there was no Facebook. Um, so, you know, some things like that, um, we noticed were very, very different. I think while we were in China, we visited two cities. We visited Beijing as well as Shanghai. And between those two cities, it was a very different feel. Mm -hmm. uh, Shanghai, I think, was very westernized. So it mm -hmm. felt very much like a large city in the United States. Um, Beijing was a wonderful city, I think we would all agree, and uh, a lot of history there, but there was a little more of a, uh, I would say probably a, a militaristic um, mm -hmm. feel, or it's just a little more maybe tension um, as we were visiting that city. Mm. Which is also the capital city of China, so right. um, it's a little bit different. What were their school buildings like? They were like our school buildings. There were some school buildings that were brand new state-of-the-art equipment, and there were some buildings that were ancient buildings, basically, that they had really capitalized on the architecture of ancient China. And then there, were, there was one school in particular that half of the building was um, really old and half of the building was new. 
And they had capitalized on that piece and had ancient China culture in this building and had a little more westernized culture in the other building so that students got to see the difference between the two. I would say that all of the buildings that we visited were probably three to five stories mm -hmm. high, uh, which is something very different. We maybe have schools that are two stories high, but they were uh, multiple stories high. And many of their schools had a boarding facility on site because uh, some of the students come in on a daily basis, but other students are boarded there throughout the year. Now, I know our teacher of the year, Brooke McCurdy, went on the trip too, and she could not be here this morning. Uh, but did you guys actually get to go inside any of the classrooms and see instruction and things of like that? We did a little bit. We kind of got to peek in some doors. I think one of the things that, that I noticed, um, because it's been a big issue and a point of discussion here, was class size. And our class sizes are larger here than what we've had in the past. We've got schools 25 to 27 at the elementary school. And I think what we saw there were class sizes um, in the 30 to 40 student range. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so much larger in some aspects, you know, the students were sitting in rows, the teacher was at the front of the room talking, um, you know, the students were interacting. I think one of the big differences I noticed was while we really focus a lot on collaboration and students coming together and working in small groups, we probably saw a lot more whole group instruction um, and, and very little um, student engagement interaction mm -hmm. uh, in small groups within the classes. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you think these students will uh, do in transitioning to our culture and whatnot? I know when they're here for their short time visit, that three week stay, we're going to try to expose them uh, to as much in the community and the state as we possibly can. But uh, looking into your crystal ball, how do you think these children are going to do once they get here in Iredell County? I think many of them will do well, but I think they definitely will need to be placed um, with nurturing parents who are going to be very supportive and realize that these kids are an ocean away from home mm -hmm. um, and many of them for the first time in their life. So they're definitely going to need support from the community, from the homestay families and from the teachers and um, leaders in the building as well as the students. So it sounds like the next big step in, in this process is reaching out and finding those host families. And Kelly, as you said, it's going to be imperative that we find families that are nurturing and caring that will really embrace these children and, and help them out. Uh, while they're here for their three week stay in February, uh, they will be tested as far as their reading ability and language communication skills and whatnot. Talk to us just a little bit about that. And, how that process is going to work. Um, we'll be working with the students in our um, ESL department will be helping us to test all of the students that come in the five domains of reading, listening, speaking, writing, and communication. communication. Um, so that we can make sure that the students, mm -hmm. that the language barrier won't be a problem for them when they come back. We'll also be testing them in reading and math to make sure that we have appropriately placed them in their courses for the fall. And these children have been taking English since kindergarten and they are high school students. So uh, a lot of them have uh, a pretty sophisticated language skill, I would imagine. Uh, did you communicate with any of the children on your visit? We did. Um, we had student ambassadors who would take us around the building and talk to us. A lot of times the kids have really good spoken English, but it doesn't mm -hmm. always mean that they understand everything that you say to them. Yeah. Um, in the United States, we tend to use idioms a lot, mm -hmm. and students don't always understand the differences when we say that's cool, um, what that actually means, because to them, if you said that's cool, then they would think it meant cool to touch. Oh, uh, yeah. Gotcha. The vernacular changes yes. just a little bit. Yeah. Well, um, after this short term visit in February, uh, the kids will interview us. We'll interview them. Uh, if they're interested in coming back for the year long experience, that will start in August of 2016. And we hope to place them in all seven of our high schools and uh, they will be here for the entire academic year then. So that's very, very exciting. Uh, let's close this out by giving each of you an opportunity to share your most memorable moment or your one biggest takeaway from your time in China. Jay, how about you? Um, my most memorable moment, I guess, would probably be um, when we got there. Uh, the first thing that happened was we had to split into different cars, um, and I took <laughs> a taxi to the hotel with um, the people who were hosting us. 
And uh, a taxi ride in China was definitely <laughs> a, an interesting experience. Um, so that was probably my most memorable moment. Yeah. Yeah. The term lanes are kind of optional yeah, in China. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kelly? Um, I think the, my most memorable moment, again, would be even just the reception that we had at each place that we went to. Um, the folks were really excited to see us and talk with us. And it kind of helps to dispel some of the things that you see in the movies about Chinese people and the Chinese culture. They are very warm, they're very loving, and they're very excited about collaborating with our school district. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would certainly agree with both of them. We received a very warm welcome from everyone that was there. They were very excited about the exchange program. I think for me, one of my personal um, takeaways was um, you know, getting to visit the Great Wall and Tiananmen Square. And uh, it was very, um, you know, it, it really made you think about the freedoms that we have in the United States that sometimes we take for granted when we were there at Tiananmen Square. And I could, you know, reflect on the, the memories of the late 90s, um, you know, when they had the protest there. So it really makes us um, reflect on things that we often take for granted. Mm -hmm. Well, very good. Well, we certainly appreciate you folks uh, being ambassadors for the school system and making this journey for us. And we're very excited about this uh, new partnership. We do feel like that it's going to be good for our kids and uh, they will learn a lot from this experience. We hope to take another group back to China too. And, and hopefully that will be a group of our students that can go over there and be ambassadors for us abroad. Uh, I'm excited about this for one reason and it is if you're gonna change the hearts and minds of, of people, you do it when they're young. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very excited about these young people coming here to North Carolina and to the United States and getting to experience democracy and free enterprise firsthand. And we hope that they will take those seeds back and share them with their families and their friends back in China. And of course, our, our children will learn a lot from, from this experience as well. But thank you again for being here and thank you for taking that, uh, that long journey for us. We, we appreciate that. And thank you for watching today. Uh, again, we hope to have more information posted on our website very soon about this very exciting initiative. And we are looking for families in the community that would, that would uh, consider hosting a child for us. So please visit our website. And if you want more information about this, you can contact Mrs. Cooper. And uh, thank you again for watching today.